So let's start with the invisible decrease. Now this is a technique you're going to want to know if you make amigurumi because it makes the decreases invisible. You can see on this piece here you can't see where I've decreased. And the way that we are going to do this is we go in the front loops only of our stitches and we grab the two front loops. So the front loops are these ones here. We grab the two front loops and we yarn over and pull the yarn through all three loops. So to start, we're going to go underneath the first loop of the stitch that you want to decrease and then straight underneath the second loop. No yarning over, just straight underneath the second loop of that front loop only of the stitch you want to decrease. And then you're going to have these two loops here on your hook. You are going to want to yarn over now. So we're going to yarn over. And then you're going to pull that yarn over through those two loops and through the loop that was already on your hook. And that is going to give you your invisible decrease. And you can see it looks like a stitch. It doesn't look like a decrease, which is why they call it invisible decrease. So we're going to do it again, just so that you can watch and repeat and learn as you go. And same thing, so you're going to go underneath the front loop only of the first stitch you want to decrease. And then underneath the front loop only of that second stitch. It can be a little bit fiddly, but keep going with it. You'll get the hang of it eventually. Two loops and our loop that was already on our hook. Yarn over. And you're going to pull that yarn over through all three of those loops. Now it can be fiddly, especially if you're using a splitty cotton like I am, but you are normally able to work it through and pop those pieces back on your hoop quite nicely. And that is our invisible decrease, a really great amigurumi technique. So let's talk about stuffing. The stuffing can really make or break an amigurumi and what you're not going to want to do is leave it till the very end. You want a decent sized hole to push that stuffing through. It should be indicated in the pattern where you're going to want to put your stuffing in. So, you know, which round you're going to want to put it in. What we're not going to do is try and wang a massive ball of stuffing like this into this piece. We're going to do it little and often. So that's my first tip, little and often. Making sure that you're pushing it all the way down and compacting it nicely so that it's going to give you a decent shape. Alrighty, the second tip that I have for you when stuffing is to turn your piece that you're stuffing. So you can see here that as I'm stuffing, I'm turning my amigurumi piece as well. The reason for that is it's just quite simply to make sure that I get all the stuffing in all the bits. So I'm not going to have any areas that are a bit saggy or that haven't got as enough stuffing in them. It's just a great way to make sure you're stuffing evenly as opposed to just plopping it all in the middle and hoping for the best. Third tip is to make sure you push it down nice and compact you will see that if you pop it down nice and compact, you'll have a lot more fabric left at the top um, when you pinch it. Whereas if you didn't compact it enough, it'd be like that, but your piece would be really, really squidgy as well. And then finally, my um, last sort of stuffing tip is to make sure that you attach a stitch marker to your hanging or your final loop and pull it tight. That way you aren't going to get those bits of yarn dangling inside the piece when you're trying to stuff it and then they get caught in the piece and then you have to either pull some stuffing out to get them out or you start to unravel yourself which can bring you a whole world of problems. So just nice and securely with a stitch marker will do the job for you. Stuffing really is a personal preference. I like to have my amigurumis quite firm. Some people like them quite soft and while that can be quite nice for things like, you know, them teddies that you can get and you hold them by one arm and they dangle down and they look really cute because they're all floppy. Um, I like to have my amigurumi quite um, firm so that they, you can see their details. They hold their shape nicely. Their body parts sew on quite nicely as well. 
Um, so it really is personal preference. Stuff as much or as little as you want. There is no sort of, you know, magic number here for how many bits of stuffing you're going to put in. It really is up to you. The thing I will say is don't overfill it because you are likely not going to be finished crocheting your rounds yet. So don't overfill it and you can add more stuffing as you go. Alrighty, this is a technique that I took for granted when I first started because I knew how to finish off my amigurumi pieces. But I know a lot of people don't and how to close them. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're just going to make a slip stitch with the very last stitch and this is going to mean that you can pull it through and tie a nice knot. So a slip stitch, cut your yarn off, mine is already cut off here, and then pull your yarn all the way through, all the way through that slip stitch, making sure you're leaving a long tail to fasten off and give it a nice pull. That'll give us a nice knot and it also gives us a nice start and end point for sewing together our last round. So we're going to sew our last round together using a tapestry needle just in, out, in, out. And I like these tapestry needles with the curved ends on them. It just gives you a bit of a better push through the stitches when you're working up with amigurumi. So that's another top tip. Um, and yeah, all we're going to do is we're going to sew in through one stitch and out through the other all the way around that little circle to close it shut. So pop your yarn on your needle and we're just going to go in, out, in, out, in, out, all the way around. So making sure you're going in through um, underneath both loops of the stitch. You can push the stuffing down so you don't get it caught, but don't worry if you do, you can cut the little bits off at the end. So in through this first stitch, the one to the left of the knot, we're going to go in here, push up through the whole opening, and then we are going to push out from the inside of the hole to the outside of our work underneath the next stitch. And it's just that simple all the way around, and you'll see at the end why we do this. You Again, you want to make sure that you're going underneath both loops of the stitch, not just through one. So we're going under, not just through that front loop, we're going underneath both loops. In, out, in, out motion all the way around. So the reason for this, you'll see at the end, is because it draws that hole nice and tightly closed. And then you can just pop a couple of stitches in that hole to make sure that it is secure. So I'm all the way around and then we just do a big tug on the end of the yarn and you will see the hole nice and easily closes up there. And then what I like to do afterwards, give a big tug on it, just be careful if you're working with any fragile yarns like your chenille or anything like that. And what I like to do afterwards is I like to just put a knot in the top. So the way I do this is just thread it through um, both sides of the circle that we've just closed and then pull a loop, but don't pull it all the way through. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my needle through the loop once and then through the loop again. So that's going to give me like a double knot effect. And then I'm going to pull nice and tightly on the end again and that's going to give that double knot nice and close to the work. And that's how we finish off our amigurumi projects. And finally, the easiest but probably the thing that most beginners won't know is how to hide our ends in amigurumi. You don't have to weave them in. Some of them you can leave in the pieces um, after you've stuffed and closed them, but some of them, like this one, you're going to finish with an end. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick the stitch that's closest to the knot you've made to finish with and you're just going to push your yarn needle through that stitch and push it till it comes all the way out the other side. You want to go quite deep but not deep enough that you're going to have issues pushing it through all the stuffing. It will come out bare with it and you want to make sure as well that you come out of a stitch so you don't want to come out between stitches you want to come out of an actual stitch this will make it easier for cutting the end off and also for the end to hide itself back into the work so coming out of that stitch you want to make sure you push that yarn needle all the way through your work pull it out 
all the way through, making sure that you've pulled your yarn tight. Okay, so pull your yarn tight and this does a couple of things. One, it hides the little knot and two, when we cut our yarn off, it will, if you're keeping it quite taut when you're cutting it off, it will hide the yarn back inside the shape for you. So you won't have to push the yarn tail back in. If you keep it taut when you're cutting it off, it'll just shoot back in there itself. So it does two things, hides the knot and hides the tail. So pull taut on it when you're cutting it, making sure that it's taut and probably making sure you're using better scissors than I am. We'll just hack away and hope for the best. And you can see there that no yarn end is showing. So those are some of my top tips, beginner tips for amigurumi. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other tips, please drop them in the comments. I will see you guys in the next one.